All right. Uh, good morning, everybody. No look now. We are at the weekend. So, how was your day going? Or how did your uh, week went? It's going good. How's yours going? Well, yeah, a little bit busy, but yeah, I guess uh, we don't have any choice, uh, especially for you guys, because I think you will have uh, test number two on uh, on the week uh, next weekend, right? So I hope you started uh, preparing for it. Uh, Dr. Almus just told uh, us yesterday that uh, the practice test is already up in uh, CASA. So she said it was an, an official homework, so you should try all of those items. Anyway, um, I saw that uh, an answer key was also uploaded in CASA, so take a look at it. I suggest you try answering the problems there. If you got stuck somewhere, you can go to look at the answer key, but I guess we can spend uh, some time next week uh, going over your questions about uh, the practice test. Uh, I'm not sure what would be our schedule next week because I guess you already started with section 7.7 .7 this week or earlier in the lecture, is that correct? So that means we have to cover some examples about improper integrals plus separable differential equations for next week. So it will be great if you can try the practice test, take note of the questions that you think are a little bit difficult or challenging for you guys. So we can discuss about uh, we can discuss them on um, Monday or perhaps Wednesday in preparation for your um, for your exam on the weekend. All right. Uh, does that sound good? OK, and then yeah, I also finished grading my share of the homeworks. Um, I graded, I think, 98 papers or 96 papers. I uh, was done uh, yesterday and uh, the scores are good. Um, though uh, my main comment is that um, about the writing of the solution. I mean, it, uh, some some students uh, wrote the correct integrals, the correct setup, but there are just some tiny details that were missing. For instance, if you have an integral like this in the answer, they forget to put the parentheses, which is a little, it's just a tiny detail, but uh, I would like to see that you guys write the solution correctly, like enclosing the entire integrand if it is a sum in, in inside a big parentheses so that everything gets multiplied by dx. Um, also, especially if you are doing a right minus left, um, because for instance, you have the function from A to B of say uh, x plus 3 minus 4x, and then they enclose it in parentheses, quantity squared for the washer method. And then for instance, they, get, uh, they have x squared plus 3 minus uh, 7 on the other side, right? And they just put the x over it here. Though it's a very tiny detail, but everything here should be multiplied by the dx because integrals mean nothing uh, without the differential. So everything, all uh, the entire function inside the integral is sort of multiplied with the differential dx so that the integral makes sense because a simple integral doesn't make sense technically without the differential in x. So even if you write a to b of x, and you evaluated everything correctly, there is a tiny portion of myself that want to deduct some points out of it because uh, of the missing dx, because the integral without the differential means nothing, right? So, but I guess for this week, uh, for this homework, I didn't give any deductions, but hopefully you guys uh, uh, not only write the substance of the solution correctly, but also the form. So yeah, and it will, it will help uh, I guess in retaining the information, if you write the correct, uh, if you write the statements using the correct mathematical grammar. Mm -hmm. All right, but uh, I think you should see your scores um, over the weekend or early next week. So wait for that. The deadline for TAs to uh, to submit the graded homeworks is uh, later tonight at midnight. So uh, I'm not sure our, when our lead TA will be uploading them back to CASA. So perhaps early next week, you'll get your results, right? And then you can, uh, if you have questions about the grading, then you can let me know, right? So for today, I, I am planning to um, 
to solve some problems about the centroid and then uh, continue on with uh, using Pappus's theorem to find the volume of solid superevolution. I guess last time we started with a centroid problem. I guess in particular, this is problem 36 from uh, the worksheet. Uh, let me just pull up my own copy of the worksheet over here. Okay, this is problem 36, which is asking for uh, the location of the centroid. And then I'm thinking to follow it up uh, with the uh, problems B and C or sub problems B and C, which ask us to use Pappus's theorem. Let me go back to the instructions. Okay, here we go. So we already did the uh, part A last time. We set up the integral that will give us the centroid of the region. And then I'm thinking, let's see, uh, let's use the Pappus's theorem to find the volume of the solid when it is rotated with respect to the coordinate axis. Mm -hmm. uh, I see Muriel has a question. Perhaps I can touch on that uh, later uh, towards the end of the session, just for continuity of discussion. So just kindly uh, remind me about 1140 or 1145 so I can say something about your question. Uh, all right. So uh, yeah, will that be good? Um, also, let me know if you have questions about uh, exponential growth and decay, because I'm thinking that that is a little bit off topic for me, because that's something that you have already covered a lot of times in algebra. So if you want to answer some questions about that, uh, just let me know also. And then have you done separable differential equations? Because se section, the textbook in section 7.6 only talks about exponential growth and decay, but did not discuss separable differential equations. But in the exercises for section 7.6, there are some problems about uh, differential equations. So have you done differential equations in the lecture as part of 7.6? Nobody remembers. Perhaps you haven't talked about it, so you're not familiar with differential, with separable differential equations. All right. Uh, okay. Right. Oh, maybe I'll also. Uh, ah, so it is a video lecture. Okay. So what I'll try to do now is to probably answer two problems from the rest of the worksheet, and then probably go on with some more examples from 7.6 and then answer Muriel's question about uh, 7.7, .7, which is improper integrals. OK, sure. So I guess we did the uh, centroids last time, and we mentioned that centroids are nothing but uh, the geometric center of a solid uh, of a region with constant density, right? And we say that the centroids can, can be computed as a weighted integral of the length of the vertical strip divided by the area. That's why if you want to get the X coordinate of the centroid, we integrate against the length of the vertical strip, the coordinates X, right? So this is how we get the average X value, so to speak, right? So this is the sum of all weighted X values divided by the area of the region. And that's how we get the X bar or the geometric center of the region with respect to the x-axis. Now to get y, right, or to get y bar, the y coordinate of the centroid, we again take the weighted average of the y values with respect to the length of the strips or the vertical strips, right? So this is our weighting function. This is always the weight times the y values. But since we cannot put y here because we are differentiating with respect to x, so what we'll put instead is the average of the y values of the graphs. Well, the y value on top is f of x. The y value at the bottom is g of x. We take their average, so that's f of x plus g of x all over 2. And you can simplify this by multiplying the numerator by the weighting function. You get f squared minus g squared. Then you have a 2 in the denominator. So that will be the thing that you will need to integrate and then divide it by the area. So that's how or that's why you get to this formula for the y component of the centroid. All right. Now, 
Uh, we had problem 36 last time, I guess. Uh, we computed the area last time and then set up the integrals that will give us the locations of the centroid. But I guess I left the evaluation of the integrals to you. I just computed it uh, earlier. So the X bar is uh, 21 over 10 and Y bar is 279 over 50. So that means that the centroid here so here the centroid is at um, 21 over 10, comma 279 over 50, right? So that means that's the geometric center of our region. So let's see where that is placed. So that's, uh, what was that? Uh, 21 over 10, so that is 2.1, so it should be somewhere here. And then what is uh, 279 over 50? Uh, let me uh, try to see its numerical value quickly. Two seventy nine over fifty is about uh, five point fifty eight. So that means uh, the centroid is over here. So that means that's the geometric center of our region. So that's where the centroid is. Okay. And then let's answer part B of this question. Okay which asks for the volume using Pappus's theorem. Uh, yeah, the, uh, which asks us to use Pappus's theorem to find the volume of the solid of revolution obtained when the region is rotated about the x-axis. So our region, let me see a little bit. How does the region look like? Okay, so x equals three here. Okay, so this is our region. And we want to rotate, and then the centroid we say is somewhere here, 2.1, 5.58, right? Uh, or let's use the exact values here. So I'll use the fractional forms. It's also advisable that you stick to fractional forms because in the exam or the quizzes, you won't be allowed to use calculators. So let's stick to the exact values. Uh, and then we want to rotate it about the x-axis okay. or to revolve the region with respect to the x-axis. Well, uh, the thing here is, okay, Pappus's theorem tells us that the volume is equal to the area of the region times the distance traveled by the centroid. Okay, so that means, uh, oh, but we already knew the area of the region. So this is uh, by Pappus's theorem. Okay. The area of the region is uh, two over, uh, 45 over two. That's what we computed last time times the distance traveled by the centroid. Well, how do we measure the distance traveled from, um, the distance traveled from, uh, the distance traveled by the centroid? Sorry, guys, it's a little, almost a weekend, so yeah. Okay, so the axis of revolution is over here, the x-axis. So that means as we revolve the, reg the region about the x-axis, the centroid will be traveling this much. Right, so when you do the revolution, it will be that uh, it will travel that way. Okay, so how uh, what would be the total distance? Well, uh, Maria, it is not just uh, 279 over 50 because what we want is the distance traveled by the centroid. Okay, any uh, other guess? So imagine the the imagine the the set uh, the region being rotated about the x-axis. And as we revolve the region about the x-axis, this centroid will travel along a circle. And Harrison is correct. So it is not just 279 over 50, 
but it would be the circumference of that circle on which the centroid will travel as we do the revolution. But you have a point there, Maria. Um, 279 over 50 will represent that will represent the radius of the uh, the radius of the uh, of the circle on which the centroid will travel. So it's going to be two pi because uh, we're doing the circumference of the circle, so that's two pi times the radius, right? So you had a two pi here, and then the radius will be the y coordinate of the centroid. So that's two seventy nine over fifty. Right, and then you can simplify it. So you get you can cancel the two here. We can cancel uh, five here, so we get ten. Here we get nine. So the final answer would be nine times two hundred seventy nine over ten pi. Right. So I leave out the calculations to you guys. Yeah, Maria, that's fine. If you if you want to memorize the formulas, that's fine. But for me, uh, memorization is not uh, is not easy, so I always go back to the concepts, right? So let's try part C. For part C, we have the same region, okay? And then I have the centroid again here at 21 over 10. 279 over 50, but now the axis of revolution is the y-axis, okay? But again, Pappus' theorem still holds, so this would be the area times the distance traveled by the centroid. If you're going by the formula from the lecture, it would be the area times 2 pi times sort of the radius for the circle in which the centroid will travel. Again, the centroid uh, will travel this way now, because we are rotating the, uh, the, the region with respect to the y-axis. So that means the volume will just be uh, 45 over 2. That's the area we computed, times 2 pi times the radius. Well, the circle on which the centroid will travel has radius 21 over 10. Okay. And then you can simplify. And then let's cancel here. I'll get the two here left, a nine here. So that's nine times 21 over two. So that's gonna be a, a pi cubic units. Okay, let's put cubic units over here, All right? Okay, uh, any uh, questions about this? I prefer again uh, using that uh, uh, that formula for the center. They're looking at it as the area times the distance traveled, because what if the AOR is say uh, y equals say negative three? Okay, so the reason will look like uh, is still this. Okay. We still have the centroid over here at 21 over 10, then 579 over 50, uh, sorry, 279 over 50. What's it really? 279, yeah, 279 over 50. And then the axis of revolution happens to be at y equals negative three. Okay, and then we can use Pappus' theorem still because we know the centroid, so it's gonna be area times the distance traveled by the centroid. So this would be 45 over two times two pi times some radius, right? But if the axis of revolution now is at uh, y equals negative three, then the radius of the, uh, the radius of the circle on which the centroid will travel will look like this. Right? because the centroid will travel like that, okay? So that means here the volume will be given by 45 over two times two pi times what? I guess this would be uh, three plus 279 over 50, right? Because this is uh, 20, uh, 279 over 50 units, and this is three units for a total of three plus 279 over 50. And that's gonna be your volume. 
All right. So you see how uh, easier it is when you know the centroid of uh, the the centroid of the, the of the plane region. Uh, you can easily compute the volume use multiplying the distance traveled by just the area compared to using cylindrical shells or the disk or washer method in computing the volume, right? So you can take advantage of a knowledge of uh, yeah the centroid. And actually, one interesting thing is that this is a uh, this is a formula that was discovered by uh, a mathematician named uh, Papus of Alexandria, um, and he lived between uh, 279 to 350 AD. And after more than 2,000 years, or about 2,000 years, we are still using the formula he discovered, right? So this was uh, a formula he invented back in, um, I guess, uh, before 350 AD. But this formula inspired some great mathematicians like uh, Da Vinci, uh, Sir Isaac Newton, and most of the 16th century mathematicians. And this just uh, tells us what the power of math is, right? So this is a thousand year old formula, and yet here we are still studying them, right? <laughs> so I, I hope you get the, uh, you, you appreciate the, yeah, this formulas. All right, uh, any questions? Yeah, I see somebody in the chat saying, uh, you're doing quiz five, but uh, you're already uh, doing materials for quiz number seven. What are those quizzes about? Quiz five, uh, is, st uh, is that still about uh, centroids? And quiz seven is about improper integrals? Oh, I see, yeah. Uh, do you prefer we pick up the pace or is it, uh, uh, is it good that uh, uh, is it good for you still if we continue with some examples about centroids? Because I can skip ahead some of the problems and go straight to uh, improper integrals. But uh, I don't want to go fast for the sake of just covering everything. I want to uh, at least give you an idea of how to uh, solve problems before leaving that particular topic. Oh, I see. So it will be great if you can send me probably some examples from uh, the quizzes so that uh, so that uh, we can solve some hard problems. Because yeah, I agree. Uh, looking at section 7.5 from the textbook, most of the problems are quite easy, right? Compared to the quizzes, because I'm doing CASA tutoring and they have uh, some interesting questions over there. Uh, okay. Let me see. I'm thinking about doing problem 38 or um, a problem from uh, from the CASA tutoring I had yesterday. Uh, let me see. OK, yeah. Let me try if I can uh, remember that question. Just to make it more interesting for you guys, <laughs> because I see that uh, because I, I see that uh, you also feel that the exercises here are mm, a little bit easy. So let's add this problem. Um, find the volume of the solid form by revolving the region inside x minus 5 squared plus y plus 3 squared equals say um, let's make it easy let's make it 16 uh, around or ab uh, about then what axis of revolution do we want about um, say x equals say 6 all right so uh, initially, if you look at this problem, the problem doesn't tell, doesn't prescribe any method that we need to use, right? So that means we can pick which one is most convenient for us. So uh, first, maybe I'll take a look at uh, how the region looks like. Do you guys still remember your conic sections? Or you already buried it um, deep into your memories? 
<laughs> so if you look back at this uh, equation, I, hopefully you remember that this is the equation of a circle with center at x equals 5 and y equals negative 3. Okay, so that's the center of the circle. And the radius is, uh, the radius is 4. Maybe I should change. Yeah, I will need to change the axis of revolution here. Hold on. That's a problem with inventing questions on the fly. <laughs> so, okay, center is at 5, 3, and then the radius is 4, so that brings us to 9. Okay, let me draw the circle first. 9 and 1. So, 1 here, 9 over here. And then negative three, so that brings me to one. And that brings me to negative seven. Yeah, let me draw it out. So imagine this is a circle. <laughs> That's the best circle I can draw on my iPad. But this is the... Uh, this is the shaded region. A circle centered at x equals 5, y equals negative 3 with radius 4. Okay. And you want to get the area, uh, the volume of uh, the solid formed when we rotate this, uh, this plane region about x equals, let's say, let's say the y axis. So the axis of revolution is over here, okay? Right, so you can solve this problem using either the disk or the washer method or the cylindrical shells method. So um, you can set up the integral like that, but that would be a little bit painful to do because uh, the integrals will look very messy. There would be uh, square roots all over the place. And I don't think anybody wants to work with um, with square roots, right? So here I'll take advantage of Pappas's theorem. So uh, I'll use Pappas's theorem. But remember, Pappas's theorem requires two things: first, the area of the region, and second, the centroid, right? So the area of the region is this is a circle. We all know that the formula for its area is pi r squared. Uh, but from the equation, we know that the radius is equal to 4. So that means the area is pi times 16. Uh, yeah. So that would be 16 pi units. And then next, the centroid is the geometric center of the region, right? And if you have a circle, the geometric center will be the center itself, right? So that means uh, centroid is at 5 comma 3, which is exactly the center of uh, the circle, right? So that means if I do the revolution, the centroid will be traveling along this circle, along the circumference of that circle. So therefore, we can say that the volume is the area 16 pi times 2 pi radius of the circle traveled on which the centroid will travel, right? So the radius of that circle on which the centroid will travel is 5 units, right? So times 5, so that means we get 160 pi cubic units. You're guaranteed that you will get the same answer if you do if you use the cylindrical shells or the disk washer method in order to find the volume. But you see how easier it is when doing Pappas's theorem. We actually didn't use any integrals over here, right? So we just uh, computed the area because it's just a circle, and then the centroid can be found without doing any integration because uh, the centroid is nothing more but the geometric center of the region. So that's it. Yeah, this is a, uh, somebody asked uh, me about uh, with a problem similar to this in the CASA tutoring yesterday. So I just remember it was a good example to share with you guys. All right. 
Now, Michael sent a question. Uh, it's about arc lengths. So maybe I can, uh, um, yeah, I can quickly answer that. But any particular difficulty with this, uh, Michael? So I'll just use uh, dots or bullets for um, for questions that we just added to the worksheet. So Michael ask uh, ask help for this problem. Find the arc length. of um, f of x equals x squared minus 2 raised to the 3 halves all over 3 for x's between 2 and 6. Yeah, I still encounter some problems like this in the tutoring center. Uh, and their main concern is not the setup of the integral, but evaluating, uh, evaluating the actual integral. So sort of Yeah, there would be a lot. Uh, it would be difficult to work with uh, with things uh, inside a square root. That's why evaluating uh, arc lengths would be problematic because there's a square root there and expect some difficulties whenever dealing with integrals with the square root. So let's do this carefully and hopefully some things will uh, will can will uh, simplify or cancel out nicely with the square root. So remember, we need the f prime for. Um, for the formula for the arc length, so let's take uh, let's take uh, let's take a derivative of f. So I'll just copy the one third, the scalar multiplier there, and then derivative is three over two times x squared minus two to the one half, and then we'll have um, an extra two x over here by the chain rule. That's why I suggest simplifying everything before you plug them in into the formula. So you see that this is just x times um, x squared minus 2 to the 1 half, right? And then remember that in the formula, we need the square of the derivative. So let's square it before looking at the big formula just to, uh, to see if we can simplify things before putting it inside the radical. So here we'll have x squared times x squared minus 2. Right, and then now uh, the arc length is simply given by the formula: the integral from two to six of the square root of one plus the derivative squared. Let me see if I forgot something. Okay, dx. Okay. And then now if we simplify this, what will we get? We'll get two to this uh, integral from two to six of, uh, let's try to simplify it. I'll get one plus x to the fourth minus two x squared dx. And then let me rearrange this as x to the fourth minus two x squared plus one dx. And I hope you reached this far in your solution because I guess this is one thing that probably you have forgotten to do. Look at the radicand. The radicand actually is a perfect square trinomial. You can factor this as x squared minus one quantity squared. Right? So if you try to expand this, you get back to this. So this reminds us, okay, uh, calculus one or calculus two topics will, might not be enough for you to survive the exams or the homeworks or Cal 2 in general, you should still remember these bits and pieces of information from algebra or pre-calculus. Because once I recognize that the radicand is a perfect square trinomial, I factor it as such, then the square root will be gone. So I'll simply have x squared minus 1 dx, and then I can nicely integrate it as uh, x cubed over 3 minus x evaluated from two to six. And then this would be six cubed over three minus six. And then I'll plug in the lower bound. So that's two cubed over three minus two. So that would be what? Six cubed is uh, 12. You can write that six squared times six over three minus six minus 
eight thirds minus two. And then I can cancel this. I'll have a two there. So that will just be uh, what? That will just be 36 times two. So that's going to be 72 minus six. So that's going to be 66 minus eight thirds plus two. So this is 68 minus eight thirds. So this would be 68 times 3 minus 8 over 3. I hope I'm doing the uh, arithmetic right, so kindly double check it. Uh, and then 68 times 3 is 24, carry 2, so that would be 204. Minus 8 over 3, so that's going to be 196 over 3. All right. Anybody very good at arithmetic here? <laughs> Kindly check my uh, my final answer here. OK, yeah, great. Uh, so this is an illustration that if you encounter some uh, some arc length problems and then you reach uh, the point that you have a radical and any U sub cannot uh, solve the problem, uh, that means you need to re-examine the radicand. Perhaps it can simplify nicely like what I did here, I use some factoring techniques. Sometimes you need some identities like some things from trig or from the hyperbolic functions. So yeah, because you should be able to evaluate this rad, uh, this integrals uh, nicely without using any fancy uh, technique of integration, at least for now. All right. OK, so um, let me see. I can have, uh, let's answer problem 36 from, uh, oh, problem 38 from this worksheet, that I, which I think is interesting because it's another parametric problem. So for number 38, we, we, were, uh, we are asked to find a centroid and then find the volumes formed by rotating the solid with respect, to, uh, rotating the region with respect to the X and the Y axis. So, but the region here is bounded by the triangle whose vertices are a comma zero, b comma zero, and zero comma c. All right. So, if you look at the region, it's a triangle. So perhaps let's put a comma zero here. Then let's put b comma zero over here. So here I will assume that b is greater than zero. Though uh, you can also assume that a is greater than zero. Uh, you can do it uh, according to your preference. But I'll assume that b is greater than zero. And then uh, the third vertex is at zero comma c. So our region will look like this. Which as we expected is a triangle. Then we need to find the centroid as a part A of the problem. Right? So for the centroid, we need the area. The area of the region is just an integral from uh, you can choose either using vertical or horizontal strips, but if I will use vertical strips, I'll need to split the integral into two because here, if the strip is here, I'll have blue minus red, but if I have the strip over here, it's going to be blue versus the yellow or the x-axis, and I don't want to split the integral into two pieces, so instead I'll work with horizontal strips because that will require the blue minus the red uh, line, right? So no problem about that. So I'll integrate with respect to Y because we're using um, horizontal strips. And then the bounds would be bounds for Y. The region started here at Y equals zero and ended up when Y is equal to C. So those would be my bounds, right? But we need to find the equation of um, the equation of the respective lines. But let me start with the blue ones, blue one first. The blue line passes through what? It passes through B comma zero and zero comma C, right? 
So remember the formula y minus y1 equals the slope. So that's uh, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 times x minus x1, right? Your usual point slope form for the formula of a line, right? So here I'll use this as my uh, x1. I'll use this as my y1. So I'll have y equals, the slope would be what? It would be c over negative b times x minus b, right? Uh, but remember, I'm using an integral with respect to y, so I should solve this in terms of the variable y. So if you do the, uh, the algebra, this would be, I solved it before, but I lost my paper. But anyway, so this should be um, x equals b minus b over c y. Okay. And then you can do the same thing for the red line. Take note that the red line passes through a zero and um, zero c. And then doing the same thing will give you x equals um, a minus a over c y. Okay, so those would be the equations of the line. And remember, we're computing the area. So this would be right minus left. So I'll have a big grouping symbol here. The right function is the blue line, which is b minus b over c times y, minus the left function is a minus a over c y. Okay, so this is the area. And then uh, if you simplify the integrand, uh, remember b and c here are just numbers. We just don't know their exact values, but for sure they are simply numbers. If you simplify that, it would be b minus a all over c times c minus y dy. Right? And then you do the integration. You can take the constants out or the constant multipliers out. So you get c minus y dy. This is b minus a over c. The integral would be cy minus y squared over 2 evaluated from 0 to c. All right. Remember, y is the only variable. A, b, and, C's, uh, a, b, and c are all constants, right? And then if you simplify this, you will get uh, c over 2 times b minus a. And you can actually do a quick check here if this is the correct uh, area. Because what we have here is a triangle, right? And if you remember from geometry, the area of a triangle is the base is one half base times height, right? So one half, so I have that uh, denominator two there. The base, how long is the base? The base is B minus A units long. So I have that. And what's the height of the triangle? The height of the triangle is you drop a perpendicular coming from the top vertex, and that is C units. So there you go. So if you're good at geometry, then you could have recognized that the area is nothing more but C over two times B minus A. But if you're a um, somebody good at calculus, then you'll do the solution this way and you get the same area, okay? Now for the centroid, okay. Remember we want X bar equals area, uh, area in the denominator then an integral weighted by the length of weighted by the length of the uh, horizontal strip here you'll have this in your integral and then since we are looking for the x coordinate here we would have written an x here inside the integral so we are integrating x against the length of the horizontal strip, but something will be wrong here because we are integrating with respect to y, so I cannot plug in x in here, right? So that means what we should do is take the average x value. So this x will be gone. Let me just move it a little to the right, okay? 
And then we'll take the average y value, uh, the average x value. Well, it will just be the sum or the average between the blue line and the red line. So that will just be actually that will be exactly this, but a plus in the middle divided by two. OK, then you can simplify it as one half integral from zero to C of B minus B over C Y quantity squared minus A minus A over C Y quantity squared all times D Y integrated from zero to C and then all over the area, which is C over two times B minus A. OK. Are you still with me, guys? I know a lot. Uh, there's a lot of algebra here that I am skipping, so I hope you can recreate the solution. But again, the point here is uh, for you to understand the process and do everything uh, carefully, right? So you you simply need uh, to simplify this. I use the term simply, but that might require uh, some work. But after you do that, you'll get um, finally you should get two thirds of A plus B over three. Oh, sorry, two thirds of A plus B. Okay, so that would be the X coordinate of the centroid. Okay, so I hope you can fill in the, the missing details here. And then for Y bar, okay, you still have the area in the denominator. Again, we integrate from zero to C and then we will be integrating some function with respect to the weight, uh, with respect to the length of the horizontal strip. So you have that the length of the horizontal strip over there, which you also used in the setup for the area. We are integrating with respect to Y. We want to get Y bar. So I'll test, can I put a Y over here? Oh, actually I can because I am integrating with respect to Y. So this will be the, the integral that will give you the centroid or the Y component of the centroid. Once you evaluate it, let's say you should get C over three. <laughs> so you need to uh, insert details. Okay. So, but if you do the algebra right away, so you get C over three. Okay. So therefore the centroid is at uh, two thirds of A plus B comma C over three. Okay. Because I always uh, love to uh, analyze the certain problem with a visual with a visual aid. Okay. So uh, for part B, we need the volume when the solid is revolved around the X axis. So our axis of revolution is over here. Okay. Now I'll take advantage of Pappus's theorem and our knowledge of the centroid. The centroid is said to be at two thirds of A plus B, so that should be somewhere here. And it's C over three. So the geometric center is somewhere here. Let me move it a little bit. Okay. Yeah. So, okay, so this is our region. We know the coordinates of the centroid. Of course, my figure was drawn not to scale, so uh, it doesn't appear to be really the centroid being in the geometric center, but believe me, it should be there if you draw the figure to scale. And then again, the volume will just be area times the distance traveled by the centroid. The area of the region we knew to be a uh, C over two times B minus A, right? And then the, the centroid will travel along this circular path. So there you go. And this circular path will have this as radius. So that means here the distance traveled by the centroid is 2 pi times the radius of that circular path, but that circular path from here until here, uh, the radius of that circular path will be from here until here, but we knew that would be C over three units long. 
right? So that means that the distance, uh, the volume would be what? It would be C squared. Times uh, B minus A all over three pi units or cubic units. Okay. All right, let's go to part C. Okay, thanks Kevin for the uh, for the feedback. Uh, same reason here, similar question, but the only thing that uh, changed was the axis of revolution. It was put at the y axis. Oops. And we knew the centroid would be here, somewhere over there. Okay. Uh, okay, so the volume is still area times the distance traveled by the centroid. The area is a C over 2 times B minus A times the distance traveled by the centroid. But as you perform the revolution, the um, the centroid will travel uh, along the circular path. OK, and so the length of that path will be the circumference of the circle with formula 2 pi radius. But the radius of that circle from here until here would be the x coordinate of the centroid, which is 2 thirds of a plus b, right? That would be times 2 thirds of a plus b. So this would be uh, what? This would be cancel the twos. So you will have uh, two thirds C times, I guess you'll have a B squared minus A squared cubic units. All right. So yeah. That would be uh, some cool applications of uh, of the centroid. Oh, it's already three minutes beyond time. I apologize for taking uh, three minutes uh, too long for today, but I hope this helps at least for your understanding of the centroid. So for next meeting, uh, we'll do uh, we'll do some uh, discussion about exponential growth and decay plus improper integrals. And again, if you have some questions about the practice test or for, for your preparation for test number two, let me know on Monday so that we can uh, discuss them, all right? Okay, so you guys have a good weekend and uh, let's see each other again on Monday. Bye, everybody.